There's one additional Australopithecine species we need to introduce this week. This species is represented by only a few fossils, some cranial and dental fragments, a few postcranial remains, and possibly some interesting behavioral evidence which we'll talk about. It's referred to as Australopithecus garhi. These specimens come to us from the middle Awash Valley of the Afar region of Ethiopia. The cranial specimens are interesting because they bear lots of similarities with South African Australopithecus africanus, as we'll see, but again, we're quite a bit geographically displaced. So one of the questions for Australopithecus garhi, actually, is whether or not it simply might be an East African version of that Southern African species which we've already talked about. But looking at this specimen, you can see that there's quite a bit of facial prognathism in the one remaining specimen that we have, with a large anteriorly projecting jaw. The teeth are still quite large. Um, there's a small amount of glabellar projection. The overall cranial capacity in the specimen is relatively small. But again, it bears lots of similarities with South African Australopithecus africanus. Here we see Australopithecus garhi on the right, STS-5 from Sturkfontein on the left, which is Australopithecus africanus at 2.5 million years of age. It's thought that these specimens are similar in age at about two and a half million years. The angle of these pictures is slightly off, but it might be that there's slightly more projection in the Garhi specimen than in the STS-5 specimen. But it's also possible that this is a male Garhi and that STS-5 is a female, which might explain some of the differences in prognathism. But you can see similar amounts of postorbital constriction, a similar overall profile to the cranial vault, and many other similarities with these specimens. If we look at the dentition, we can compare the very well-preserved Australopithecus garhi specimen with that of STS-52, another specimen of Australopithecus africanus from the cave of Sturkfontein. And again, there are lots and lots of similarities in terms of the overall size and morphology of these dentition. Australopithecus garhi has a notably very large canine actually for this time period, but similarities in terms of the overall dimensions of the premolars, size and shape of the molars as well, as that which we see over here with STS-52. So it's possible that Australopithecus garhi, at two and a half million years of age, represents simply an eastern version of that species that we've already observed for almost a million years of time in southern Africa, Australopithecus africanus. However, what really has distinguished Australopithecus garhi, what's made it noteworthy, is the possible association it has with some of the earliest stone tools that we know of in production. At two and a half million years or 2.6 million years of age, we have associated sites, not that have produced these fossils themselves, but are thought to be temporally and geographically associated with Australopithecus garhi, where we have evidence of very simple stone tools, just basic cores and flakes, and also perhaps the first evidence of butchery. Now we also have associated with these cut marks on actually faunal remains, so fossils of animals that appear to show evidence of being cut marked or butchered using these stone tools. This evidence of butchery is perhaps the earliest evidence of that activity that we have of in the fossil record, and might be an important behavioral difference associated with these specimens. Whether or not this behavioral difference by itself is enough to distinguish it from Africanus remains to be seen. Ideally, the discovery of more fossils representing Australopithecus garhi will allow us to test this hypothesis as to whether or not Australopithecus africanus in southern Africa and Australopithecus garhi in Ethiopia are the same species or not. It also might provide more reliability to the potential association between Garhi and the earliest production of stone tools. But nevertheless, Garhi at two and a half million years ago is one of the specimens contributing to the overall pattern of variation that we see in East Africa around this time period.